Following the HHS agenda at 1 p.m., following that, there will be the HHS deferred decision making at one, uh, thereafter, and then it will be the AEN slash HHS deferred decision making thereafter, and following that would be the AEN HHS GVO deferred decision making. Uh, present with me is my vice chair, Senator Aquino. This meeting is being streamed live on YouTube in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on Wednesday the 20th at 1 p.m. in room 225. For those on Zoom, your audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. Each testifier will have one minute to testify. If there's a technical glitch during your time to testify, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. I will be reading a list of individuals who submitted written testimony for each measure. We apologize that the closed captioning does not accurately transcribe the names. If you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislator's website. You'll find a link on the status page for the measure. We appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee does have their testimony. See, it's a super long list of them. And that's the reason we're limiting you to one minute. Okay, um, you, please use your time wisely to either add additional comments or you can stand on your written testimony. First up, we have HB 2712 relating to autism. First up is DCAB. Kirby Shaw, I don't see him here, in support. Next, we have Department of Human Services providing comments, DHS. Aloha. Uh, Aloha, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Judy Moore Peterson on behalf of the Department of Human Services. We do stand on our written testimony. We appreciate the intent of the bill um, as long as the appropriation does not uh, reduce or replace the priorities identified in the executive supplemental budget request for fiscal year 2025. Thank you very much. I'm here and available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Bayada in support. Please proceed. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Miley Martin. In behalf of Bayada, we stand in strong support of this bill. Um, we have an increasing number of families calling us for services because they can't find another Quest provider. Sadly, we have to add these families to our wait list because with the low reimbursement rates, we can't hire or retain enough staff. Waiting sometimes years for services means children are not getting the services they need. And this only increases the cost to the state to support individuals with autism across their lifespan. Mahalo for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Christina Libby from Mauloa Learning and Support. Hawaii Disability Rights Center in support, Lewis Urchuk, um, Behavior Analysis, Noka Oi, Inc. in support, um, Christine Walton, Faith Kahakili of Behavior Analysis, Noka Oi, also in support, Easter Seal Hawaii in support, ABC Group Hawaii in support, um, Jen Tolentino of ABC Group Hawaii in support, BTSH in support. Marielle Fernandez, Council of Autism Service Providers and Support. Susan Rocco for Martha Ginan, Special Parent Information Network and Support. We have Hawaii Association for Behavior Analysts and Support, Hava. Are you present? Please proceed. Hi. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee, Kristen Kobabert, on behalf of the Hawaii Association for Behavior Analysis, um, really representing providers here today, as well as consumers of behavior analytic services. Um, you know, unfortunately, as Bayada just testified, we're really looking at challenges in retaining a workforce to serve children, particularly on the Big Island um, and the other neighbor islands, where we're really just seeing that we can't provide enough services to keep up with the need. And so asking for your support for this bill. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Su Suzanne Eli, Maui Learning Academy and Support, Hawaii Early Intervention Coordinating Council and Support, Kerry Urosevich, Robert G. Pierce, Early Learning Board and Support, Crystal Thomas, Ho Horizons Academy of Maui and Support, Lauren Rappaport and Support. Lauren, are you present? Please just come on up. 
Thank you for the opportunity to testify in strong support of HB 2712 HD1. My name is Lauren Rappaport and I'm a master's of social work student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Through my master's, I gained in, I've interned at an interdisciplinary program focused on disability in which I've been able to gain the insights of professionals in many health and mental health related fields. From these conversations, it's clear to me that children with autism spectrum disorder on MedQuest plans are often forced to wait years to access ABA services widening the health equity gap that already exists among low socioeconomic families. Um, it's also clear to me that RBTs whose agencies accept MedQuest ABA clients can't afford to pay their living costs. As a result, RBTs are forced to get a second job or leave the ABA field in Hawaii. Increasing MedQuest reimbursement rates would likely lead to improvements in hiring retention of ABA providers and which were waiting times of, for ABA services for children, adolescents, and, and young adults with ASD on MedQuest plans. I urge you to support HB 2712 HD1. Mahalo Nui Noah for this thank opportunity you. to testify. Thank okay, you. thank you. Jocelyn Miller in support, 36 other individuals in support. Anybody here present wishing to testify on HB 2712? We don't have anyone in opposition. Okay, moving on. HB. I don't know, HB 2712. Yeah. We're moving on, unless you've got one minute. One minute, okay. So the purpose of this act is to set forth an appropriation of funds for applied behavior analysis services for persons with autism. It requires a DHS to pursue maximum federal matching grants. Um, so applied behavior assessments can help with like, diagnosing autism when they're displaying a spectrum of symptoms and signs that can be characterized as autistic disorder. Autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disability caused by a neurodivergent medical condition, which is debilitating to the person. Those who suffer from autism characteristics can make life very challenging. Examples of social communication and interaction skills and social interactions can be characterized by the following social symptoms and repetitive behaviors, such as avoids or does not keep eye contact so lacks the ability to effectively grasp communication skills, does not notice when others are hurt or upset by 24 months of age, lacks the ability to recognize emotions, repeats words or phrases over and over again, also called echolalia, and must play with toys, is focused on parts of objects, is upset by minor adjustments. So it's important to have qualified nurses and doctors to work with persons suffering from such a debilitating thank condition you, Angela. to improve the quality of life and health. Thank you, Angela. Okay, thank you. Next up. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 2712? Members, any questions? Okay, seeing that, moving on. HB 2425, relating to child abuse and neglect central registry. First up, uh, Attorney General in support. Thank you, Chair. My name is Lynn Yeomans. I'm a Deputy Attorney General, and we're testifying in strong support of this bill. We asked for one technical amendment, adding back a definition um, from 587A to reflect, um, just to clarify how that definition will be used in the um, eventual bill. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up, we have Department of Human Services and Support. Good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair. I'm Daisy Hartsfield, Social Services Division Administrator for the Department of Human Services. I'm here on behalf of Director Kathy Betts. The department did submit written testimony in support of this administrative measure. We offered comments as well as uh, respectfully requesting that this measure become effective on July 1st, 2025, if passed, so that the department can have the adequate time to make necessary changes to implement this measure. And I'm available for any questions. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next, we have Marilyn Yamamoto, Hawaii Coalition for Child Protective Reform, providing comments. Marilyn, are you present on Zoom? They're not a present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, moving on. HB, um, members, any questions? Seeing none, moving on. HB 2713, relating to adoption assistance. First up, we have Kathy Betts, Department of Human Services, providing comments. Aloha again, Chair. On behalf of the department, the department did submit written testimony. It appreciates the intent of this bill and offered comments. Um, in regards to any appropriation that's tied to this bill, we would ask that any appropriation not reduce or replace a budget priority identified in the executive budget. I'm available for any questions. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Um, no one else having registered testify. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 2713 relating to adoption assistance? Seeing none members, any questions? 
Okay, um, Daisy, can you come on up? I have a question. Okay, so there's a blank appropriation. I'm not the introducer. Do you know how much the introducer was expecting to ask? And is any of it part of your budget? Um, yes, Chair. I don't recall the exact amount. It is over um, 600000 and it is currently included in the recommended budget by the Finance Committee. Okay, so it's only 1800 Okay, so I'll put that down as part of um, committee report. 600000 right? 600,000 plus, I don't know ex the exact figure off the top of my head. I can, I can provide it to you though, later. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. HB 1800. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, anybody else wishing to test, um, ask questions regarding 2713? Seeing none, moving on. HB 2535, relating to child care. First up, Office of Hawaiian Affairs in support, Michelle McCoy. Yes, good afternoon, Chair. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Next, we had Executive Office of Early Learning and Support, Yuiko. Okay, we stand on our written testimony and support. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Department of Human Services providing comments. DHS, are you present on Zoom? They're not present. Well, they, they're in person. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Aloha United Way in support. Next, we have um, Sherry Nakamura, Ope'e Coalition in support. Yes, we support. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii Children's Action Network Speaks in support. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Early Childhood Action Strategy in support. Thank you. Next, we have Parents and Children Together in support. AAUW in support, Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii in support, Save Medicaid Hawaii in support, Commit to KT in support, Chamber of Sustainable Commerce in support, Early Learning Board in support, 25 other individuals on support. Anybody with else wishing to testify? HB 2535. Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, moving on. HB 1964, relating to early childcare. First up, Executive Office of Early Learning and Support. I understand that written testimony and support. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have OHA in support. Michelle? Yes, standing on our written testimony. Thank you. DHS providing comments. Okay, so for the amendment. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have. County of Hawaii, Doug Adams, Department of Research and Development in support. Sherry Nakamura for He'e Coalition in support. Thank you. Hawaii Children's Action Network, Debbie Zeisman in support. Good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair, Deborah Zeisman on behalf of Hawaii Children's Action Network speaks. Uh, we're in strong support of this measure. It's one of our priorities for this session. And I would just like to point out, we have uh, figures and details in our testimony. Um, this is crucial for this year because we have been helping to fill the leaky bucket that we have with childcare of folks leaving the sector for higher paying jobs with federal um, COVID era monies that end this year. So it is critical that we start to um, fill those gaps with some state funds if we hope to meet our goals, if not to stop losing childcare providers, but actually to start growing the number of folks in the workforce. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Vivian Eto, Early Childhood Action Strategy and Support. Aloha, Chair and Vice Chair. I'm Vivian Eto with Early Childhood Action Strategy. We stand in strong support of this measure. Uh, you have our written testimony, but I really want to underscore the impact that the workforce is having in our capacity. We are losing for the past eight months an average of 100 licensed childcare seats per month uh, and childcare providers will point to our workforce crisis as the major reason. Uh, this issue is really undermining the state's ability to expand early learning for children. It's undermining our economic goals and certainly undermining the health and well-being of our children and families. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm sorry, I missed Joshua Witch. 
of Honolulu. Okay, thank you very much. Apologize for that. Um, and another person of Polomua Collaborative Community Organization in Support, A AUW in Support, Chamber of Commerce Hawaii in Support, Angelina Mercado, Hawaii State Coalition Against Domestic Violence in Support, John Fink, Aloha United Way in Support, Parents and Children Together in Support, Early Learning Board in Support, Chamber of Sustainable Commerce in Support, Elizabeth Fujiwara, Fujiwara and Rosenbaum in support, Doris Matsunaga, Save Medicaid Hawaii in support, Commit to Keiki in support, Hawaii Association for the Education of Young Children in support, University of Hawaii in support, Hawaii Women Lawyers in support, Hawaii State Democratic Women's Caucus in support, Susan Schedule in support, 25 other individuals in support. Um, anybody else wishing to testify? Come on up. Aloha, committee. Angela Melody Young testifying on behalf of CARES in strong support. So this act will enhance the early child hair care and boost the childhood education programs and policies being heard this season in strong support. Um, so of the affordable early childhood care and education for especially the marginalized communities and impoverished neighborhoods. Um, and I think this will also enhance the work of the LG's office. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 1964? <clears throat> Members, any questions? So DHS, I have a question. Could you come on up? Okay, so, and I forgot to ask this on the last one, which is similar in that it supports um, child care. The other one is child care contracts pilot program. Um, Federal child care block grants. Why can't we use it for this one and or or the prior measure? Um, so the federal requirements don't allow us to provide like a direct subsidy directly to the child provider to okay. the child care staff. Okay, and I forgot to ask this of the last one about the contracting um, classrooms. Mm -hmm. Could the federal child care block grants be used for that? Come on up. That's what HB 2535. Hi, Chair. Yes, we can use the CCDF monies for the contracts. Okay, so do we need um, any state matching funds for the other one, the HB 2535? Because you didn't say. It's not in your DHS. Um, Matching, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna and it say, doesn't even say how much for that one. We are asking for um, more input, I would say, from the proponents of the measure so that we can have a pretty good. Um, okay, that's right. We did ask for yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks, and Debbie Zeisman, come on up. You're a proponent, I think, of both. So we've got figures on this latest one, 1964, but it's all general funds, which is going to be difficult in this year. But the prior one, which where we can use federal funds for, mm -hmm. do you have any monies? I mean, any budgetary amounts? Do I have budgetary amounts? Yes. Well, that would be DHS's. Well, they're saying call. that they don't know. I think they would have to get back to you on their ability to okay, spend federal funds you. and coordinate. So I'm, thank you. I'm the nonprofit advocate. So okay, sorry. <laughs> yep, not the department. Okay, um, EOEL. Do you folks have figures? I know. Nobody has figures. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry about backtracking. Any other questions, members, for um, either 1964 or? Um, the other one, 2535. Seeing none, moving on. HB 1662, relating to child care tax credit. Office of Hawaii Affairs in support. Yes, we stand on our testimony support. Okay, next one, Executive Office on Early Learning and Support. We stand on our written testimony support. Okay, thank you. Next is Office of the Governor in support. 
Department of Human Services and Support, Department of Taxation, providing comments. Come on up. Chair, Vice Chair Garrison, Kurt, no tax. Uh, we are here to stand on our risk testimony for writing comments and answer questions at the end. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have Douglas Adams of County of Hawaii, Department of East R&D and Support, and HB 1662. We have so it's Conlon, I see you up front. IATSE in support, although well, you didn't register. Well, I'm chair, vice chair, members of the committee. We scan the president by ATSC Local 665, sending a strong support of the measure. That'll go a long way towards helping working families uh, available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, Catholic Charities of Hawaii in support. I see you, Betty Lou, you got to turn on your mic. Okay, okay. please proceed. Uh, I'm Betty Lou Larson with Catholic Chairs Hawaii. Thank you very much for hearing this bill. This is a priority for us. We'll stand on our written testi testimony and just note that our strong support is based on the need to really help our struggling Alice families. And this would also raise many children out of poverty. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have Devin Thomas, Hawaii Appleseed. I see you present in support. Please proceed. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and member of the committee. Um, I am Devin Thomas, speaking on behalf of Hawaii Appleseed in support of this bill. Um, not to reiterate everything in my testimony, but I just want to um, highlight the fact that the federal child tax credit lifted 3 million children out of poverty in 2021 when it was expanded. That expansion expired, and we are left in a situation now where states are stepping in to create the, um, their own complementary state level child tax credits, and Hawaii can be the next one. Um, we urge this committee to um, return to um, the originally provided um, amount in HB 1662, which was $650 per child under the age of 18. Um, we believe that this is the bare minimum that we need to help our working families survive and um, put, food, <coughs> put food on the table for their children, provide for educational expenses and so on. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, we have Debbie Zeisman, Hawaii Children's Action Network speaks and support. Um, AFL-CIO, Andy Pereira in support. Hawaii Pacific Public Health Institute, Nate Hicks in support. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, member of the committee. Nate Hicks, Hawaii Public Health Institute in support of this measure. Uh, we know we have way too many families struggling to make ends meet in Hawaii. This would be a huge benefit to not only the family or not only to the parents, but to the children. They have long-term health impacts by being impoverished at the young age. This investment up front will save us money in the long term. So I uh, very much support this bill. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have, um, that was me. Okay, Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii and support Ayatsi Kevin, not you, in support. Um, Hawaii Home Ownership Center, Rain uh, Miyamoto, in support. Ryan Kusumoto of PACT, Parents and Children Together, in support. Early Childhood Action Strategy, in support. Aloha United Way, in support. John Fink of Aloha United Way, in support. Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, in support. John Bickle, Americans for Democratic Action, Hawaii, in support. Um, commit to Keiki and support, breastfeeding Hawaii and support, early learning board and support, Stonewall Caucus of Democratic Party, Michael Galoy and support. Are you present, Michael? They're not present on Zoom too. Okay, Holomua Collaborative Community Organization support, Joshua Wish and support. <laughs> okay, thank you. Chris Cofield, Democratic Party of Hawaii and support. Democratic Party of Hawaii Education Caucus and support. Democratic Party of Hawaii Labor Caucus, Jason Bradshaw and support. Imoa Alliance and support. Tax Foundation of Hawaii providing comments. Tanya Machika, are you present? They're also not present on Zoom. Okay, next we have Sergio Alcubila. I see you present Hawaii Worker Center in support. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Chair, Vice Chair Sergio Alcubila from the Hawaii Worker Center. Uh, we stand in strong support of this measure. I just, I, I do want to thank each and every single one of you uh, for the members present here today for all of your support for Alice families. You know, I was thinking of what to say to Health and Human Services regarding a Keiki tax credit bill, and the thing that really comes to mind for me is just really the mental health of of the of those that are taking care of their families. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've sat there and looked at our expenses 
for the month and just trying to figure out if we're going to make it for the month. Um, you know, and that's one of the things that workers really care for is, you know, how will they make ends meet here in Hawaii? We can either increase income or lower costs, and this bill really seeks to increase income, and it would be a big help to our working families. Thank you again, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of this committee. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have 32 other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 1662? <coughs> Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, Dotax, I have a question. Come on up. Okay, you heard the testifier, I think from Appleseed, which said that there was a prior tax, child tax credit, federal tax credit that is expiring and this basically continues it on a statewide level. How much is this gonna cost the state? Well, uh, there's no numbers in this bill. I, I do have numbers of, of what the bill would cost with the numbers that were in there before they were taken out by the Fin Committee. Okay, and so, how much was that? Um, the bill is real quick. Uh, so if this bill took effect starting in 2025 with the proposed amounts that were in the original version of the bill, you'd have expected revenue loss of uh, 86.5 million in 2026, 86.7 in 2027, 87.5 in 2028, 88.4 in 2029, and 89.4 in 2030. Could you provide those figures to us so we can just refer to in committee? I certainly can, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, the administration in another bill that we deferred to decision making referred to its own bill. I believe it includes was HB. Do I have it? I need my other. which was a more comprehensive tax measure that only goes to RAM. I believe it was HB 2404. Right. And that also included um, a dependency credit. Right. Does the um, Department of Taxation have any preference in passing this bill or HB 2404? Um, just 2404 is the governor's package, and the comprehensiveness of that would be the preference okay. between the two. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, moving on. Next one, HB 2216. Um, related to... I believe it's HB 2216, no, 1974, excuse me. 1974, State, um, relating to social services, State Council on Developmental Disabilities and Support. Okay, next up we have Kathy Betts, Department of Human Services and Support, DHA, Daisy Hartsfield. Thank you. Next we have DCAB and Support, DOH, Executive Office of Aging and Support, ARP on Zoom. Next. ARP, ARP stands on its testimony in strong support. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Audrey. Next, we have ILWU um, Local 1000 and support. Rose Marie Sebastian, are you present? Yes. I think you're, come on up. We stand on our testimony, written testimony. In support. In support. In support. support. Yes, thank you very thank much. You. Hawaii Self Advocacy Adv Advisory Council and support. Leigh Fountain, ARC in Hawaii and support. Christina Hogan, ARC in Hawaii and support. James Slavery and support. And four other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 1974? Okay, Maribel, come on up first. Maribel Tan, President of Adult Foster Home Care Association of Hawaii and also member of the Coalition of Caregivers. Uh, we are in, in strong support of HB uh, 1974. Thank you for the opportunity and here for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Maribel. Okay, I see Angela, you, you want to testify on 1974? This is personal allowance increase. No, thank you. James Labby. 1974. Hi, come on up. 
and support. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is James Woodley. I strongly support this bill personally because and may I receive personal allowance of fifty dollars, which I strongly support this bill to increase the the personal allowance to seventy five dollars, being that Hawaii's Hawaii's um. Hawaii's cost of living is very expensive and that little amount of increase would help me uh, buy food or clothing or even shower, shower accessories that we need. So I would strongly support this um, testimony in support. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, James. Anybody yes. else wishing to testify on HB 1974? Angela, you got one minute. Everybody's already in support. Okay. Aloha, Angela Melody Young, testifying in strong support on behalf of CARES. So those who are suffering from a disability or debilitating condition can get financial assistance from the federal or state level. At the federal level is a social security program. At the state level is a financial assistance program from DHS. So this would be an extra funding um, for their monthly allowance. Um, and... Um, I think we should make this happen um, because um, the disability income um, for the uh, debilitated uh, persons is something that we should um, consider. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify in HB 1974? Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, moving on. HB 2216, relating to care homes. First up, State Council on Developmental Disabilities and support. Chair, support and support. Okay, thank you. Next, we have Department of Human Services and support. We also have Thank you. Next, this BCAB in support. ARP, Audrey, are you present? Yes, ARP stands in support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Maribel Tan in support. Hello again, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. I'm Mary Valtan, uh, President of the Adult Foster Home Care Association of Hawaii and also member of the Coalition of Caregivers, representing 90% of the caregivers. CCFFH and ERs, which supplies about 3,000 plus statewide, uh, beds to statewide elder, elderly and disabled here in Hawaii, residents, a very minimal increase for over 15 years. We born in brunt of inflation and other cost um, increases. Uh, we're here almost every year pleading for your support. Um, we know that our friends and families in Lahaina is our priority right now, but please um, look at our situation also because we cannot continue our doing our business if we cannot provide for our families. Thank you for the opportunity and I'm here for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Maribel. Okay, next we have um, Maribel Tan again, Coalition of Caregivers and Support. You're okay, right? ILWU, Local 1000 and Support, Rosemary. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, yes, Rose Sebastian, I'm speaking on behalf of Ilwo Local 1000 and all the other caregivers who couldn't be here this afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for this bill. We appreciate it. Um, we are in support uh, according to our written testimony. However, I have a few questions. I have one question. Um, when this bill was presented, what was heard at uh, the house, 
there was an amount of 132 pen to increase the ceiling of the state supplement. However, this bill is blank. There's no amount. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why? We don't answer questions. Oh, I'm sorry. We, I, I, I'm learning the okay, rules here. Yes, that was my only concern. Okay, thank so, you very much. How can we support a bill that's zero or empty or blank otherwise? Um, but we appreciate- we will, we will ask the Department of Human Services yes, how to Human fill in the Service blank, right. who is right there. Okay? Yes, because that 132 that was mentioned, we are thankful, but if, the state is really serious in taking okay. care of the Kupuna's future, then I think that you guys should consider also looking at our increases fairly. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next up, we have, um, okay. ILW <clears throat> Local 1000, Arlene Hanks in support, Leilani Domingo of AFHA H in support, Charlene Bogado, AFHA in support, Arlene Agpalta in support, Janine Abrero in support, Sonia Pagli, Paglidao in support, Bueno Daglicon in support, Susan Domingo Ganitano in support, Karina Ocampo, um, United Community Healthcare for Bayi in support, Marielo Farinas um, in support, Thelma Ortal in support, James Labrie in support. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. James Labrie, I strongly support this bill to support this bill because it would also help case managers have an easier way to look for foster homes if needed. And also by approving this bill, it would prevent caregiver burnout because it is a 24 seven type of job that without the increase of payment, um, I have seen myself, or I have heard myself that they are not able to find homes because of the amount of work that these caregivers need to put in to become a 24 seven caregiver. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, next we have Roma Magnaya in support. Are you present Roman? Roma on Zoom? No, they're not, they're not, not present on Zoom. Mercedes Akitola providing comments, 22 other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify? Okay, I see. And Angela, you're already here, come on up. You got one minute and then the next person. Angela Melody Young testifying in strong support on behalf of CARES. And so this act will set forth a policy to support the facilities and nurses which supply beds and provide care to those who are suffering from medical conditions and need assisted living. This statutory provision, this law appropriates funds for those that are eligible for federal supplemental security income or public assistance by increasing the cap on state supplemental payments for type one adult residential care homes, licensed developmental disabilities, uh, domestic homes, community care foster family homes, certified adult foster homes, and type 2 adult residential care homes. Um, so there was something initiated last year for the nurses at the facilities to get their pay uh, with a structure of a bill very similar to what's in front of us today. Um, and CARES is in strong support um, of the bills um, for the nurses and the facilities um, for assisted living care. Um, and I think it will be easier um, if there's consideration 
um, to implement a policy to integrate the thank different you, levels Angela. of facilities into one thank section you, instead of all the different sections. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay, next up, IOWU, please identify yourself. Um, good afternoon, Chair San Buenaventura and Chair Vice Chair Aquino and all the committee members. My name is Susan Kinabo, a licensed adult residential care home operator for the past 30 years and currently the president of ILWU Local 1000. Licensed community care home operators across the state of Hawaii are compelled by your support to favor the bill 2216 that will increase the pay for all SSI and state supplement recipients. We are receiving $41.06 per day for the past 16 years for a 24 seven workload with no pay increase to at least fit in with the inflation. This situation alone had prompted a lot of operators to close their doors to Medicaid payment uh, patients and turn their businesses into private paying patients only. With the imminent large numbers of elderly people in Hawaii, with retirement accounts and significant assets are moderate, yet be in need of 24 seven care. Okay. A lot of these elderly and their families will look Thank into having- Thank you very much. Everybody is in okay. support. We got all of your- Thank you. There's nobody against this, okay? Thank you. This is the family member. I understand. We are going to move on. You got to allow us to make decision making. All right. Okay, thank you. Um, next up, anybody else on HB 2216? Okay, seeing none, moving on. HB 1772, um, regarding relating to fall prevention. First up, we have Office of Hawaiian Affairs in support. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, we have Department of Health in support. Robert Lau, are you present? They're not present on Zoom. Okay, thank you. Kirby Shaw, DCAB in support. Department of Health in support. Department of Health Executive Office in Aging in support, Carolyn Carival. Next up, we have ICARP, Audrey Suga Nakagawa in support. Yes, we stand our testimony in support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Alzheimer's Association in support. Rob Van Tassel, Catholic Charities Hawaii in support. Hawaii State Teachers Association retired in support. Three other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify? Yes. HB 17, come on up. Thank you. I apologize for my attire. I didn't know it was coming. No events. To... My name is Stanley Michaels, past fall prevention coordinator with the state of Hawaii for 20 years. I'm retired now, but this is a very important project. Investing in fall prevention enables you to stop a lot of the care home and the other difficult needs. If you beat it at the punch, bite it at the bug, you stay ahead. In a nutshell, when we operated at full capacity, and I noticed you reduced, there's no money left in the bill. You took it blank. So I hope that's so you're going to expand the 100000 from what it was. Every dollar that you spend saves lives, saves time, saves energy, saves earth. CDC proved it. We proved it in the state of Hawaii by being the best in the nation. We can do it again. We just need a couple bucks. I appreciate your time and consideration. Again, my apologies for my casual time. I discovered that Mr. Lau couldn't be here, so I jumped on the car. Thank okay, you very, thank very you. much. I have 25 uh, pages, copies of my testimony. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else wishing to testify on HB 1772? <laughs> Okay, um, questions, members. Um, I would have asked the Department of Health, but they're not here. Okay. Okay, come on up. <laughs> will you testify for Department of Health? I will. Okay. As a private individual, even on a retirement. I apologize, my dad just got Hello. Okay. Um, I want to know how much to put in the blank. What, was it 100,000? It was at 100,000. And our, our maximum budget was about 112 when we had our peak, when we had the very best year, when okay. CDC discovered we had the lowest injuries in the nation. 
Uh, but if you put a hundred dollars, a hundred thousand in, you're going to give us a great shot. Was that uh, was that how much it was funded? Yeah, that was the original request on the on the bill, of course. Okay, your name again is. My name is Stanley Michaels. Stanley Michaels retired. From yes, twenty years H. as fall prevention coordinator. Okay. Okay. Thank you I'm very much. I'm so respectful, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, any other questions, members? Seeing none, moving on. Next up, HB 1771, relating to Hawaii Health, Health Aging Partnership. First up, Vita, um, no, Council on Developmental Disabilities in support. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have um, Michelle McCoy, Office of Foreign Affairs in support. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Pabea in support, DOH Executive Office on Aging. Carolyn. Yes. Please Hi, proceed. Chair, Vice Chair. Thank you so much for hearing this measure. I just wanted to offer comments. Uh, we support the intent of the Healthy Aging Partnership. It improves the overall health and well-being of the state's aging population by reducing health disparities. We actually have a housekeeping measure in the budget bill, House Bill 1800, that will move funding from one line item to the Healthy Aging Partnership, and there would not be a need for an appropriation. So we'd like to request that that be the vehicle for the Healthy Aging Partnership and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have um, Pearl City Community Church, 32 individuals. They all provided in support how, how healthy it was, helpful it was for them. Next we have ARP, Audrey Suga Nakagawa in support. Please yes, we send, our, we send our testimony in support. Thank you, Chair. Okay, Gary Simon, Hawaii Family Caregiver Coalition in support. Seven other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on HD 1771? Um, members, any questions? Okay, moving on, HB 2224. <clears throat> Relating to long-term care. First up, Carolyn Kadirao, Office of Aging and Support. Yes, we stand in strong support of this measure. This is to provide for a long-term care plan and also for a 1.0 full-time equivalent of a long-term care planner in our office. And um, you have my testimony and we stand in support. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next we have ARP and support, Audrey. Yes, ARP stands on our written testimony and st strong support, thank you. Next, we have um, ILWU, Local 1000, Rosemary, and support. Yes, we stand on our written testimony, strong support. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Um, next, we have Paige Choi, Health, Healthcare Association of Hawaii, and support. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 2224? Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, moving on. HB 1553. Um, Excuse me. Relating to death benefits. First up, Department of Human Services providing comments. Aloha, Please. Chair. Uh, Gina Moore Peterson on behalf of the Department of Human Services and Director Betts. Uh, we stand on a written testimony offering uh, comments. We appreciate the intent of this bill so long as any appropriation does not uh, reduce or replace the priorities identified in the governor's budget. Thank you so much, and I'm available for any questions. Okay, and I've been corrected. This is HP 1533. Thank you, um, Judy Moore Peterson. Next, oh, the Hawaii Funeral and Cemetery Association. Jay Morford, are you present? Please. I am. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and Committee members. I uh, appreciate your time this afternoon. Um, my name is Jay Morford. I represent the Hawaii Funeral and Cemetery Association. We stand on our written testimony in support of this measure, and we would like to ask if the original amount of $1,600 be inserted back into the bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Mililani Group Inc. in support. Rosemary Sebastian, ILWU in support. You can stand on your written testimony. Thank you. Mitchell Dodo in support. Anybody else wishing to testify at HB 1533? Members, any questions? So Judy, I have a question. Judy, can you go, get back on? Trying. Hello. Okay, thank you. Hello. So your written testimony is 
DHS paid $277,600 for an $800 benefit last year. That's correct. So did this gets raised to $1,600 as originally requested. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Would that be an additional 277600 It would. Okay. Is any of that, are these all going to be um, general funds or is any of it going to be fed? No, none of it is federal. It is all general funds. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other mm -hmm. questions? Okay. Seeing none, moving on. HB 408, relating to health. First up, John Mizuno, Statewide Office on Homelessness and Housing Solutions in Support, not present. State Council on Developmental Disability providing comments. Thank you, Chair. Committee members, Dane Chubartolis, Executive Director for the Hawaii State Council on Development Disabilities. Um, we, um, we oppose the extension from three to four um, based on there is lots of vacancies already. And just to do it just because didn't make sense to us. Uh, we are concerned about our vulnerable population that are, are in these homes. When we met with caregivers over the weekend, we asked, why aren't you taking, there's 500 vacancies, 400 in Oahu throughout, they're afraid, they're scared. Other ones, when we asked, why are you taking them? They need the money, we'll chance them. We'll take that fourth one, we get some extra money, we need it. So we're very concerned about this measure. We understand and we, we just ask if the vacancies are a full, yes, look into extending to four for capacity building. We understand that. But being that there are vacancies and individuals, the caregivers are afraid to take some individuals, we ask that the bill also include some sort of training for these caregivers, trauma-informed care. When individuals are forced to live on the streets or forced to live in an institution when they come out, they have behaviors that aren't always typical that these caregivers may be used from. Okay, thank but, you. Thank you. Okay, next up. Um, Kathy Betts, Department of Human Services, providing comments. Judy Moore Peterson, please proceed. Hello, Chair, uh, members of the committee, Gina Moore Peterson, on behalf of the Department of Human Services, we do stand on our uh, on our written testimony, offering <laughs> comments. We appreciate the intent of this measure. Uh, we do defer to the Department of Health regarding um, their uh, questions of uh, safety and licensing. Thank you so much. I'm available for any questions. Thank you very much. Next, we have ILWU Local 1000 providing comments. Yes, comments only, Chair. Uh, may I say this? Uh, it's it's a good thing, but in a way, it's not in the best interest of either the care caregiver or the patient. I think that these caregivers should be given uh, an increase in their long-term care reimbursements first before even adding a burden of care to these caregivers. Um, with with this proposed uh, bill, uh, you give additional uh, client to the caregiver who who will be so overworked and less pay. I don't think that's right. And you know they are not able to hire additional help because of their low current pay right now. So I think that uh, you guys should look at uh, increasing their reimbursements first before looking into adding ad an additional debt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else wishing to testify on HB 408? Sure. Yes, come on up. I didn't get this until, yes. Yeah, I'm um, Lauren Kim, policy officer for the department. Uh, we're offering comments and we submitted very late testimony. I took it off the printer like an hour ago. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for that if you just, uh, since you're just having the chance to read it now. Um, we acknowledge that adding a fourth uh, adult to a CCFH may be a useful tool in the toolbox, but uh, reiterating what Ms. Bartolda said, there are currently 500 vacancies and we would hope to see um, that number come down before exploring uh, the fourth option. But should the legislature pursue this, uh, we are requesting amendments that get to, and they're in the last couple of pages highlighted yes, in I yellow, um, that require, um, that get at a, a patient safety assurances and evaluation since the intent of this is uh, an extension of homelessness policy, uh, a sunset date, because again, we are testing out policy 
and uh, NMOA with DOH to um, identify some of the roles and responsibilities. And lastly, uh, an evaluation um, to determine its, its efficacy. Um, and with that, I will leave it with our comments and we will be available for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify in HB 408? Okay, Angela, you got one minute, come on up. So um, Angela Melody Young testifying in strong support. Um, so this act will set forth policies within the Department of Health um, to create provisions for the community care foster family homes. Um, and um, so we're in support of this proposal. So the State Department of Human Services certifies community care foster family homes to enable those needing care in an intermediate care facility or in a skilled nursing facility to remain in a home. This prevents institutionalized institutionalization and the cost of care in a community care foster family is more reasonable than in an intermediate care facility or a skilled nursing facility. This can help with care for, um, for example, fall preventions and a variety of medical conditions and emergency responses necessary um, for appropriate care. Um, so in strong support. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else looking to testify in HP 408? <coughs> Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, I'm going to recess for decision making. Um, should we Recalling the one o'clock agenda for HHS for decision making for HB 2712, Chair's recommendation is to pass it as is. We're going to note in the committee report um, the high need for the increase that provides that prevents providers currently from hiring qualified practitioners, and we're going to report also the DHS proposed low, medium, and high budget scenarios. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Um, we're going to leave the defective date on it. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair votes aye. Okay, House Bill 2712, House Draft 1, recommendation is to pass as is. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Keo Kololi? Aye. Senator Shimon Bukuro? Aye. Senator Alwa is excused. Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, um, thank you. Next, um, for HB 2425. Chair's recommendation is to pass with the Attorney General's proposed amendments and add an effective date of July 1, 2025. So pass with amendments. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, if our members are present, any reservations, any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, for HB 2713, noting the blank appropriation, we're gonna pass this as is. We're gonna note in the committee report approximately 600,000 is already in the H is already in HB 1800. Um, any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, House Bill 2713, House Draft 1. Recommendation is to pass as is? Yes. Okay. All right, four members are present. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, for HB 2535, we're also going to um, <coughs> pass this as is. We're going to note the, we're going to keep the defective date. This needs a lot of work. Um, but we're going to keep it moving and hopefully the providers will come up with a figure to put in, to insert in the blank amount. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, four members are present. Any reservations? Any no's? Thank you. Could Recognition you, um, is adopted, Chair. all cell phones be turned yes. off or outside, yes. please? Yes. Up to you. It's up to you. We're voting now. Okay. Okay. Well, all members are present. <laughs> all members are present now, Chair. Okay, thank you. Recognition is adopted. Thank you. For HB 1964, relating to early child care, 
Chair's recommendation is to pass with Department of Human Services amendments. We're gonna note in the community in the committee report that 19.3 million in general funds is needed to implement this plus an additional 100,000 for one full-time employee. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, House Bill 1964, House Draft 2. All members are present. Any reservations, any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. For HB 1662, noting the high amount in the general funds requested by this um, bill, we're gonna defer this in lieu of passing HB 1776, which is gonna be on the next decision making. Um, any comp, well, so moving on. For HB 1974, um, we're gonna pass this with amendments. We are gonna delete the annual review requested in section two, paragraph G, and add an effective date of October 1, 2024. We're gonna note in the committee report after the deletion that there is no general fund appropriation needed. That's making it easier to pass. Um, any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, pass with amendments. Okay, all members are present. Any reservations, any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, for HB 2216, HD2, Chair's gonna pass this with amendments. We're gonna insert in the original amount of $784 on page two, line two, and $892 on line six on page two adding an effective date of October 1, 2024. We're also gonna note in the committee report per DHS with these amounts, no general fund appropriation is needed. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, pass with amendments. Okay, all members are present. Any reservations, any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. So for HB 1772, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is um, and we're going to note in the committee report the original requested amount for the blank to be $100,000. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, all members are present. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. For HB 1771 HD1, Chair is going to defer this per the um, Office of Aging's request because it's already in the budget. So moving on. HB 2224, Chair's recommendation is to pass this as is. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing on Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, all members are present. Any reservations, any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. For HB 1533, Chair's recommendation is to pass this as is, I'm sorry, to pass as is. We're gonna note in the committee report per DHS that an $800 death benefit means that a payment means $227,600 in general funds. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, Vice right Chair for the vote. Okay, all members are present. Any reservations, any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. HB 408, Chair's recommendation is we're gonna keep this moving. Um, we understand um, the foster care homes concerns. I mean, we're gonna to need to increase you folks' pay before we add in more burdens. Um, we're gonna put in Department of Health's concerns, which basically requires all the kind of <laughs> safeguards that in the event this comes in um, will be required before we move this on. So we're gonna pass this with Department of Health's amendments and the Disability Council's amendments that requires the 500 vacancies be filled first before it passes. We're gonna leave the defective date um, because we're gonna get the governor's coordinator for homelessness and housing solutions to look at our concerns before we pass this. Okay, so we're gonna leave the defective date for further consideration. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, House Bill 408, House Draft 2, uh, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes with reservations. Sarah Keo Aye. Sarah Shimabukuro. Aye. 
Sir Alba, right. recommendation is adopted. Okay, so we're gonna go to the deferred decision-making calendar for HB 1769 relating to taxation establishes a refundable family caregiver tax credit, um, just like the child tax credit and the following tax credit that we're gonna be referring to, HB 1776. Um, chair's recommendation is to defer HB 1769 in lieu of HB 1776 HD2. I want to, I just want to make sure that people know that I am in favor of giving caregivers a tax credit, um, being a caregiver myself and having had to have those huge expenses, I fully understand the burdens. But I also am, I also want to give WAM one tax credit bill with the highest possibility of passing. Because if everyone, anybody who's been watching the legislative session, no appropriation bill has passed WAM because of the dire financial straits we've got. So I only want one bill with the highest possibility, and that would be. So we're going to defer the we're going to defer HB 1769. We're going to pass HB 1776, but we are going to insert. Um, we're going to gut it and insert the language of HB 2404, which is the governor's own tax bill, which has caregiver and dependency tax credit on it. In it, any comments and add a defective date of December 31, 2050 to continue um, discussion. So we're gonna give Wham two bites of the apple passing HB 2404. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair, for the vote HB 1776 passed with amendments. Okay, thank you very much. Chair, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Sarah Kiel Kuhle. Aye. Chair Shem Bukuro. Aye. Sarah Owa. Excuse. Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, um, we are in recess until we get AEN here for the next um, hearing. Thank you very much. Okay, recalling the AEN HHS um, decision making. AEN has already passed these bills, so um, we are going to just concur with their with their proposed amendment. So HB 2743, AEN's proposed recommendation, which I concur it with, with is to pass with amendments. We're going to delete language that would have defined alternative plan, county advisory board, and wastewater treatment plan. Require each county to develop and maintain a wastewater management plan. Require the county to set the amount of accessible pollution fee at a certain rate. Appropriate funds to the, each county and appropriate funds for the establishment of positions within the Department of Health. We're going to add language that requires a UHC grant college program and UH Water Resources Research Center to identify specific priority areas in which the county sewer system or other centralized treatment system will be expanded or constructed to reduce or eliminate cesspools before January 1st, 2050. Authorize the counties to use other revenues, including real property tax revenues for certain activities that eliminate, reduce, or mitigate the impacts of cesspools an appropriate and an unspecified amount of funds to the University of Hawaii and amend language to codify the language of certain definitions in chapter 11-62 HAR, rather refer to its citations to authorize rather than require counties to designate sewer improvement districts, provisions regarding the reporting duties of each county that assesses accessible pollution fee and in section one to reflect its amended purpose, define sewer system to reflect the definition of sewer ridge system as defined in HRS 342D-1. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Passing with amendments for HB 2743. 
Vice Chair for the vote, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Keokulole? Aye. Senator Shimbukuro? Aye. Senator Awa? No. Recommendation is adopted, Chair. So for HB 1989, we're just going to pass that with adjusting the defective date to July 1, 2050. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair votes aye. Okay, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you guys very much for sticking around.